Lions rule the African savannas, tigers stalk the jungles of Asia, and jaguars prowl the dense rainforests of South America. But when it comes to Australia, something is missing. Despite its vast landscapes, abundant prey, and harsh environments that seem perfect for an apex predator, the continent has never had a native big cat. But what if it did? What would the perfect big cat for Australia look like? Big cats never evolved in Australia because the continent was isolated long before true cats, the family Felidae, appeared elsewhere. Instead, Australia's top predators were very different. Up until around 50,000 years ago, lion-shaped predators roamed Australia, but they weren't lions at all. They were marsupials, like the formidable Phylocaleo carnifex, nicknamed the marsupial lion. This creature filled a similar niche to big cats, with powerful jaws and a sturdy build, yet it was related to wombats and koalas rather than lions. Marsupial lions, along with other megafauna, died out tens of thousands of years ago, and Australia was left without a large apex predator on land. Fast forward to about 3,500 to 5,000 years ago, when humans brought dingoes to Australia. Dingoes, essentially wild dogs, became the top land predators. Europeans later introduced domestic cats, which went feral much more recently, but those are small cats. So between marsupial predators going extinct and dingoes taking over, Australia never had its native panther, tiger or lion. So what does our hypothetical Australian big cat look like? Picture an animal that combines the best traits of big cats around the world, engineered for Australia's environments. First off, size. We don't want it too massive, as Australia's prey isn't as large as African buffalo but it still needs to be powerful enough to take down kangaroos and wild pigs. The ideal size would be roughly on the scale of a large leopard or a cougar, striking the perfect balance between strength, agility, and endurance. A male would weigh between 70 to 90 kilograms, 154 to 198 pounds, while females would be slightly smaller. Speed and agility are crucial. A prime prey item, the red kangaroo, can reach speeds of 60 km per hour, 37 miles per hour in short bursts, with leaps up to 8 to 9 meters long. Our cat must be fast enough to catch a sprinting kangaroo or an emu. We imagine it can sprint at least 60 to 70 km per hour in short dashes. Not quite cheetah fast, but on par with a lion's burst speed. It would have long, powerful limbs and a flexible spine like a cheetah or cougar for chasing prey in open terrain. Its muscle structure would be a hybrid of sprinter and wrestler, strong hindquarters for explosive launches and leaps, and robust forelimbs for grappling large prey. Sharp, retractable claws, perhaps five to six centimeters long, would grip into prey and also help in climbing trees or rocky outcrops. Now think about jaws and bite force. This cat's skull would house strong jaw muscles, since quick kills are important when tackling big, kicking marsupials. Modern big cats like jaguars have incredibly strong bites, around 1500 psi of pressure, which they use to pierce skulls. Our Aussie cat might not need a jaguar's skull-crushing power unless it's hunting thick-skinned prey, but it would certainly benefit from a big bite. We could give it a bite force on par with a lion or tiger of similar size, Maybe even with some marsupial lion DNA magic, granting it a higher bite strength to weight ratio. The extinct Thylacoleo sets a high bar here, having possibly the strongest bite pound for pound of any mammal. So imagine our cat's canines are long and thick, and its carnassial teeth are well developed for slicing through flesh efficiently. What about fur and coloration? Australia's climates range from hot deserts and savannas to dense forests. Camouflage would be key. Perhaps our cat has a tawny coat with muted spots or stripes, helping it blend into scrub and woodlands. You might picture something like a cross between a leopard's rosettes and a tiger's stripes, but in faded patterns of reddish brown, grey and tan to match the outback's hues. Alternatively, it could be plain sandy brown like a mountain lion, which is a very adaptable colour. Speaking of heat, our perfect cat would have special heat adaptations. Desert predators often have ways to stay cool. For instance, the sand cat has oversized ears that help radiate heat away. 
We can imagine our Aussie cat with slightly larger ears than a typical leopard, aiding in heat dissipation and also giving it excellent hearing. It might also be largely nocturnal or crepuscular, active at dawn and dusk, to avoid the midday heat, resting in shady caves or under ledges during the day. Perhaps it pants like other big cats and can withstand dehydration. After all, red kangaroos can go without water for long stretches by licking their forearms and conserving moisture, so our cat might also be good at conserving water and hunting primarily when it's cooler. What else would you give this cat physically? Maybe a mane or ruff if it lived in cooler highlands. Probably not a full lion mane, but perhaps males could have a thick neck scruff or slight ruff for protection during fights. The beauty of this hypothetical creature is we can be creative, but also try to stay plausible. Overall, picture an animal that's built somewhat like a leaner lion or a supersized leopard, with desert-savvy adaptations. This is our apex cat of Oz. How would this big cat hunt and behave in the wilds of Australia? The menu for this big cat would feature Australia's abundant medium to large herbivores, especially kangaroos and their kin. Red kangaroos, being widespread in arid and semi-arid zones, would be a prime target. An adult red kangaroo is a formidable opponent. It can deliver strong kicks and has stamina. Our cat would likely favor female kangaroos or sub-adults, which are smaller or target the big males only opportunistically perhaps fire ambush at a waterhole where even a large roo is vulnerable. Other macropods like wallaroos, wallabies and euros would also be key prey depending on the region. These smaller kangaroo species make easier meals. Versatility is crucial in the outback, so our cat wouldn't be a picky eater. It could hunt emus, Australia's large flightless birds, especially juveniles or solitary adults. Emus can sprint 50 km per hour and have sharp claws, so a cat might ambush one from cover or coordinate a short chase to grab it by the neck. Feral pigs and goats are invasive in many areas. A big cat could take a young pig or goat and even an adult with a well-placed throat bite. Deer in forested pockets could also be on the menu, similar to how pumas and leopards kill deer. Smaller prey would be eaten when convenient possums, large birds, and rabbits if encountered. However, chasing rabbits or rodents isn't energy efficient for a predator of this size except as snacks. It will focus on larger catches that can sustain it for days. Carrion might be consumed too, if the cat comes across a carcass, say a cow that died in the heat or a roadkill kangaroo. It will scavenge as long as the situation is safe. The opportunistic streak ensures it squeezes every calorie out of its range. By weight, though, the diet would be dominated by medium to large herbivores, macropods especially, making it a true apex hunter of big game. How would it hunt those fleet-footed kangaroos? Likely with a combination of stealth and short pursuit. Let's set the scene. Dusk in the outback, a herd of kangaroos grazing cautiously, our predator silently pads through the sparse brush, every muscle taut. Stalking would be its primary strategy, much like leopards or tigers. Australia's landscape can be open, but there are often tall grasses, rocks and clumps of trees, ideal for an ambush predator to hide in. This cat likely has a patient hunting style. It could spend long minutes or hours inching closer to prey, staying downwind and low to the ground. When the time came, it would burst into a sprint. For a kangaroo or an emu, both capable of fast escape, the cat's strategy might be a short, explosive chase rather than a marathon. It might try to get within, say, 30 meters of the target and then charge. With its powerful legs, it could probably cover that distance in a few seconds. Kangaroos can jink and change direction in a hop, our cat's long tail helps it to counterbalance and turn sharply to match those zigs and zags. It might swipe with a massive paw to trip the prey or leap and latch onto it. Imagine it tackling a big roo, grabbing onto the hindquarters or back with claws and delivering a decisive bite to the neck or throat to bring it down. Like most cats, a throat bite to cut off air or a bite to the back of the neck to sever the spine would be the killing method. If the prey is something like a smaller wallaby or a wombat, the cat's approach might differ. 
maybe a quicker bounce with a neat neck bite, almost like a giant feral cat. Now, consider social behaviour. Would our Australian big cat live in prides, pairs or alone? Given the environment and likely prey density, it probably wouldn't form large prides like African lions, those evolved on open savannas with huge herds of game. Instead, think more like a solitary hunter with a large territory, especially for males. Perhaps females might tolerate older offspring for a while or form a loose association with their nearly grown cubs until they disperse. We could even imagine something in between a leopard and a lion. Maybe a mated pair sometimes hunting cooperatively if the prey is dangerous, similar to how some wolf pairs work together. But generally, each cat would roam and hunt on its own, marking territory with scrapes or scent marking on trees. Imagine a future wildlife documentary. The Australian knight has a new hunter. The perfect big cat moves like a shadow, vital for keeping nature in balance. With your input, that documentary just got even better. So, share your thoughts. What do you think our Aussie big cat should look like? And what would you call this legendary predator? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.